My name is Thomas John Hopper. I was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. Came to Cape Cod in a freshman in high school. Uh, always lived on the water, uh, or near the water. My dad had worked for the Navy in World War II. He was too old to, to participate, but he did run a Bureau of Ships job in, in uh, New York. Uh, took care of the, all of the material that went into landing craft for the whole country. So we hardly ever saw him. So, but I, he was always talking about the Navy. And uh, so naturally, we went, I went in the Navy. At that time, everyone had to beware of the draft. So I immediately went down and signed up for the Navy. I joined the Navy in 1957. Uh, went to Officers Candidate School and I had a college roommate who was in the same class with me. Uh, he and I uh, did some tutoring of a lot of the other guys that were there, uh, and uh, it was an, a very enjoyable time. Then uh, got my orders to a tanker out of Norfolk. Uh, was on that for six months when I got transferred to an icebreaker. Uh, home ported in Boston. At the end of the time on Edisto, my time was up in the Navy, my three years, and uh, I decided I wanted to stay because I enjoyed it very much. Uh, I wasn't married, uh, I loved the sea. So I told my captain I wanted to and he called the Bureau of Personnel and I could guarantee me a, a career. They agreed to do that for me and I went to a gunnery school and got into destroyers. I was just going out and doing anti-submarine warfare on the, uh, uh, on the Atlantic coast. It was actually a ship out of New York. By then I had four years in the Navy, all at sea, and I got orders to a school, a new school that had just started in Newport for department heads on destroyers. At that time is when I met Sandra, my wife, and I married her in rather short time because I, her family wanted to have the wedding in June and I was due to go back to sea at the end of the school. That's what everybody did. But my orders were changed. Uh, I was the only one in the class, maybe the only one in the history of the school that had ever changed because uh, Admiral Zumwalt was setting up an operations analysis department in the, in the Pentagon and he needed people that had some amount of an analytical background. The next job was on the guided missile destroyer, the USS Charles F. Adams out of Charleston, South Carolina. Two years there, two Mediterranean cruises. My wife got to follow me around. We had never had any children. So it was very nice for her and she's, she's wonderful at traveling. At that point, I expected to be an executive officer of a destroyer. I was supposed to do it. I was the right time as a lieutenant commander. Instead of that, I got orders to Vietnam. And I knew that the small boats in the River Patrol Force did not have lieutenant commanders commanding them. They have, the, they have ensigns and JGs and chief petty officers run around those little boats. There's only four or five people on the boat and we had 240 guys doing that. A guy that I had worked with in the Pentagon was the executive officer of that staff and he said, Tom, I want you to be operations officer. My job there was to oversee the operations of the ship. That means mostly where they go, what they do, if they get everything they need for ammunition, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we even had a group of SEALs working for me. The force consisted of 240 PBRs, which is a 30-foot uh, craft with all kinds of weapons on it, uh, another 200 boats of a, large, a little bit larger that carried around tanks, carried around marines, inserted them in the places. We were running up and down the rivers and the canals of the Mekong Delta. We had a remarkable record. It was like a, an airport at sea. We were handling uh, and uh, guiding all the aircraft that came up from 200 miles away from us up into the Tonkin Gulf where the action was, offshore of North Vietnam. We did get credit for uh, six MiGs being shot down by 
either Air Force, U.S. Air Force or U.S. Navy uh, aircraft that we were handling. And then the better thing was we took down two MiGs ourselves with guided missiles. And that was the first time in the history of the Navy that any aircraft had come down and shot down by, by missiles. After that, uh, I did 18 months on the Sterrett. The USS Sterrett was the name of that ship. And it is twice the size of a destroyer. A destroyer is about 350 feet, and this is about 550 feet. It uh, has many more weapons. It's capable of anti-submarine warfare, of shooting down other aircraft, and has guns on it too. So we have three ways to go. Uh, the crew is about 450 instead of the 300 that you have on a destroyer. And then I got command of a destroyer, the USS Orlick which was the last destroyer of, the, of its class built in World War II, it was still in pretty good shape. Uh, it was home ported in San Diego uh, the first year. It was in the active fleet, and I, picked, I, I went and uh, took, over, took it over in, uh, in China. It was in the port there. Uh, it went, we went back out to the uh, gun, gun, they call it the gun line, along the coast of North Vietnam, and fired into that area for about four months. Then we got home. I did two years on that ship and transferred it in, in the second year to Tacoma, Washington for a home port when it went into the reserve fleet. And in the reserve fleet, we had a wonderful time uh, taking reserves everywhere, running around uh, in a 60,000 horsepower ship. It was a lot of fun. When I joined the Navy, I had three objectives. One was to, to be on a destroyer, and the second one was to be captain of a destroyer, and the third one was to make the rank of captain, and I did them all. So um, at that point, I went to the staff of an admiral called Commander Second Fleet in Norfolk, and I was his oper in the operations analysis, and I had about eight people working for me uh, and we were doing uh, the same kind of thing I did in the Pentagon before. Uh, it was administrative, but what I wanted to do was uh, get a captain of another bigger ship, a, like a cruiser. And every, for every one of these steps, the Navy uh, puts together a committee to look over all the records of people to see who should do it. And I, I had passed that in order to get command of a destroyer, but when it came up for a larger ship, and there aren't many very, aren't very many of them, and at the same time the aviators come in and captain those ships too, like the carriers, and we didn't have as many ships as we used to have, so I didn't make that grade. Uh, I just decided I, I didn't, I didn't want to stay in the navy and not go to sea. I got thinking about, uh, in my, during my career, about, we talked about leadership, <clears throat> but teamwork is so important. And where I saw the most teamwork was on carriers. And they'd have F-14s on the, on the flight deck flying off and on. And when you, every time they came in, you used to watch about 50 people down there on the flight deck when all of that is going on. Every one of them having a specific job. Uh, loading ammunition, uh, taking the pilot out, doing all kinds of different things, getting, then getting that plane out of the way so the next one can come in. It's like a, it's like a dance down there, but there's no music. It's 50 guys in a very dangerous area. It, people think football is a great, professional football is a team. Ha <laughs> ha, they gotta watch a carrier. The Navy puts great challenge on you and good responsibilities. Uh, you can't believe how fast you have to learn. And they have to be, <coughs> people have to be trained in all different kinds of things. But the, they do that. And they do that if they see you, you can, they think you can face the challenge. I was very fortunate in that. And every school was marvelous. They were tough. They had experienced people teaching us. And uh, at night we'd go to the club and have a couple of beers. My wife put up with me, put up with the whole deal. When I got married, I said, one thing I, do, I want, Sandra, is please don't ask me to get out of the Navy. 
And she never did, in fact. When I left the Navy, she was disappointed because she really liked it. And the people she met and, and, and went around and, you know, she, <laughs> it was my decision and I got out, not mine, not hers. Um, it was tough on her being away, tough on all the mothers and families. But uh, the, the fellowship, <clears throat> the fellowship with all the men I worked with, I'd do it all again. Uh, to answer your question about the Navy, what it did um, for me, I loved it. I just loved it.